lost my voice because we have an ongoing education fair so i just wanted to explain people always ask you know there's a lot of conflicting or confusing information online with regards to how the you know how do students get pr how do they qualify what are the options right so you know i just want to break it down a little bit so as you are aware in the canadian immigration system there are different immigration pathways we have the express entry which is the most popular especially during the pandemic you know the people who qualified like the biggest draws were for like the canadian experience class you know people who are already in canada either on the worker stream or the postgraduate stream like the student stream now um on the express entry there are three main programs there's the federal skilled worker there's the canadian experience class and there's the federal skilled trades also some provincial nominee programs run on it you know you have to be in the pool you have to be in the pool to be able to qualify for you to be able to apply for some of the programs yeah that's there now <clears throat> the two things i want to talk about are the federal skilled worker and the canadian experience class the canadian experience class for students this is what this is how it works after you graduate and now let me talk like i was saying so let me talk specifically addressing students who maybe attended like a postgrad program. So if you go to a school whereby your program is like eight months or a year, you qualify for a postgraduate work permit for that duration. For the duration of the time you studied, you'd get like the postgraduate work permit for the same duration of years. Now, if you went to do like a two-year program, then you would get between a two to three years, depending on the visa officer. And <clears throat> for you to for you to qualify to apply under the Canadian Experience class, it's expected that you have worked in an in a NOC O, A, or B occupation. So you can't do something like the NOC C and try to claim points. No, you won't, it won't work. Okay, so it's important that it's a knock O, A, or B job. And for you to find out how that works, just go onto the knock website, put in the job title that you're in, and then you'd see what the classification is. Even on the Canada.ca website, it can tell you the, the knock, um, the skill level, you know, on that. And it can also link you to the knock website. As you are aware, they will soon be changing the knock, the occupation classifications sometime this year or later this year or so. Now, if you've worked in a NOC O, A, or B, you can actually count um, roles that you, like jobs you've done in that NOC O, A, or B part-time. So if you have a full-time and you're doing a part-time in the same role, you can actually count it. And once it's a total of, I think, 1,560 or so, I'll put it in the, in the description what the specific number of hours should be, but like it has to be equivalent to one year. I think it's 1,560 or so. It has to be equivalent to one year. When it's equivalent for one year, then you qualify. But that doesn't mean you have to wait. You could just begin to gather all the documents you need, you know, your IELTS or cell pip, you know, try to like score as high as you can, um, just in case you want to qualify for any other program get your documents together, your WES evaluation, or actually, you know, if you, for your Canadian um, education, you don't need a WES for that. You need your, all your credentials, you know, the proof of your graduation and all of that. Just get everything together, your reference letters from your, your um, employment, you know, your place, get, get everything together, basically. Don't wait till the end to have it because, you know, what we noticed last year was that when they had that very special draw that we were praying they would have again this year. Sorry again, I said my voice has gone. It will come back soon. So when they had that amazing draw that they did last year that had so many Canadian Experience class people gave, I had about, I had a lot of students that benefited from that. A lot of students that had graduated the previous year and already were in the pool. We had a lot of them that were so excited that they've gotten their PR now, you know, because it was a Canadian Experience class draw and the the, the CRS score was, I think it was like 75 or so, ridiculous, but it was exciting. And that's why this year I told 
a lot of my clients let's get into the pool because you never know and you don't want to be you don't want to not be in the pool when they have that draw so anyways like i was saying once you have that one year work experience or the combination of like two or so different jobs to make up to one year then you can say that you qualify for the Kenyan experience class now with the federal skilled worker if you have previous years of work experience you can combine that with whatever work experience you have and you know benefit from whatever CR score you're getting but I have to tell you the rumors are there we have documents to prove it there's a put there's a possibility of the CRS scores for this year or next year whatever they want to start the federal skilled worker program again but like it might be from 500 yeah 500 which <laughs> which is really high and i know that the minister of ircc is trying to do the best he can you know to see how best he can diversify this <laughs> this express entry program but I know that from a couple of things he has said, it's obvious that international students are the focus in addition to like, you know, helping the economic recovery of Canada. So getting skilled workers to fill in the labor shortage. So yeah, the other option would be provincial nominee. So one thing I like to explain and confirm from students, look, are you sure you want to remain in that province you're in? If you don't want to remain there, please leave the provincial nominee program because it's not too good when a province gives you the nomination certificate and you take it, get your PR and move. It's bad. And it's going to catch up with you when it's time to apply for your citizenship. So be sure you want to stay there before you try to get them to nominate you. Otherwise, go to the province where you want to be and get the job or whatever. But like, try and qualify for another program stay away from provincial nominee if you don't have plans to remain there it's not too good it's also a thing of integrity right but yeah that's an easy way i know for like manitoba if you've worked for like six months or so you qualify for in most times you get a nomination if you apply so that's one of the provinces that it's a bit easy to get provincial nominee if you studied there and you've worked for a few months consistently not changing jobs yeah, so I just wanted to drop this there because, you know, we have this ongoing education fair, Habits with Educational Services um, Education Fair, and we've had quite a lot of questions. People have come with a lot of conflicting information they're seeing online and everywhere. So I thought to share this. I hope my next video, my words will be clear. The fair ends today, so thanks to everyone who has taken part in it. And I've been talking a lot, and that's why I've lost my voice. Um, yeah, so basically the fair is something we've been doing for years. This is the 15th. We've been doing it since 2006 or 5, 2006 about there. And it's normally taking place in Lagos, Abuja. We've done Kano, we've done Port, we do Port Harcourt a lot. But this year, because of the pandemic, we wanted to restrict the number of places we're going to. So we just focused on Lagos and Abuja, two locations in Lagos and um yeah anyway, this is not about the fairs but i wanted to drop this information and i hope to come on here a bit more i hope my voice gets better i have lots of good 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 information to share i have a lot of guests i'd like to invite to speak with you if you haven't already done so please make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification at some point i hope to be more consistent in the posting but for now i'm keeping it at um i would say so you don't hold me liable i thank you so much this is uh harvest for the immigration services enter canada my name is pearl and i'm happy to continue to share good information to educate us all i right, take care have a lovely day bye